Hi, today I want to give you just a little sample of another 10 sounds or so. And that would be, we'll start with the muff tone. So you remember the tone sound. And here's the muff tone. You just put your hand over here, either this way or this way, just making sure that the flesh is contacting, not just your finger here, but a good amount of flesh. That's the way most, uh, this is the way most people do it, is just putting the whole hand down so you've got plenty of flesh there. And make a nice firm connection with the drum. And then just hit the regular tone sound. Very different from the regular tone. Muff. Tone. Muff tone. Now, same thing applies. We can, we can apply it to the slap. Muff, slap. Same hand position. Do the regular slap. And listen to the difference between a slap and a muff slap. All right, muff slap. Next, we're going to do something that they actually don't do very often in African music, but I love it. So we'll call this an advanced piece. And it's the, I call it the ascending muff slap. <laughs> um, all that means, it's something you do with a doombeck. Um, and in another totally different technique, you do the same thing with a tabla. So a doombeck, you would, you, uh, you take a little risk because you're putting your finger, your, uh, your fingers joints right next to the wood here. And I'm just making a little sound like I would on a doom back. And I just muff the drum right here. And I'll, let me demonstrate it for you and I'll teach you some more. All right. So the dynamics are that the closer I get, the shorter the distance of skin to where I'm hitting. So that shorter distance makes a higher sound. So I'm just muffing it and I keep my, I keep my fleshy part of my hand and just gradually divide the space into shorter, shorter distance. And if you practice doing seven or eight, You'll just get used to the speed that you need to move this other hand. You could probably also do it out here. I just, I just have big hands. So it doesn't make as much of a difference. So I do it uh, Doombeck style, out, of here, out here on the edge. All right. Just a little trick sound. Now we're going to do something that's really common. The flown sound. That is two tones very close together but not on top of each other. If you did them on top they'd be like this. A flown is two separate sounds close together. And that's a flown so you know that's tone. Flown is two tones. So for instance, in one rhythm, it goes like this. So that, that's regular flowns. So there's three different timings on that one. There's a, uh, the next sound I'll teach you is a flam which is two slaps, just like two tones, for the flown. So the flam and the flown. Flam, flown. Flam, flown. All right? 
So that, that second part of the Ankiti goes like this. So it's a So that's the flown and the flam. Next, let's do the double bass. There are a few rhythms that require this, but usually it's just played in solos. And it's just two basses close together, like the flam and the flown. Now sometimes, uh, in that case, that was a one and. You can also do the other way around. You can do the pickup and one. And the difference is where the pulse is. So my in that in the in the and one my strong bass hits on the pulse with my foot. All right, now we're going to do something that is kind of common, and that's a bass pickup, or a bass just before, or it's like the and just before the tone. So the bass tone, the bass pickup on a tone is what I call it. And that's, again, the tone is on the pulse. Now they do that with a slap as well. So the bass pickup on a slap is actually in a couple of the rhythms that we teach here. It's in Korajuga and a fancy Madhu version of Jansa. It's a combo piece. So the first move for, for uh, Korajuga is right? So it's a bass pickup for a slap. That's the John Sa piece. All right. And then the finger flick is just something that I have picked up again from Doombeck and a couple of people I've seen using on djembe. And it's just something fun that I do when I'm soloing or when I'm playing in drum circles to add a little interest. And all I do is make the sound like this. All right, and so people ask, so I'll share this. I just put my thumb across, grab all these fingers, and put a lot of pressure to release them. To, there's a lot of force here to holding them, and my thumb is really straining to, to keep these four fingers in. And then I just release them one at a time. I allow my thumb to release that that one, and I allow my thumb to release that, allow my thumb to release, allow my thumb to release. So it just, all I do then is just time them. All right, if you want, practice it, it's fun. Another one is a ghost tap, and that is actually quite commonly used in advanced drumming. And a ghost tap is just a light tap to keep a 16th or a 32nd if a rhythm is really fast. And a ghost tap, let me see if I can think of a rhythm with one. Um, I'm not thinking of one right now, but let's see. It's that little light 
tap. If I did that straight without the ghost, it would sound like this. With the ghost. So the ghost is that light tap that keeps the 32nd or the 16th in that case. All right, we finished, what is that? 11 sounds.